Hi, and welcome to UBC's Next Big Thing. I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson, and my guest today is Dr. Paul Van Donkler. He's a professor and director of the School of Health and Exercise Sciences here at UBC. Welcome. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about the research you're doing and why you're doing it. I've been involved now for about 10 or 15 years in concussion research, and uh, the main goals that we have in that research is to better diagnose when a concussion happens and help an athlete and coaches and parents in terms of tracking their recovery of uh, function and then ultimately making a, a better uh, informed and objective return to play or return to activity decision. So it's around uh, coming up with better means of objectively assessing what the effects of a concussion are so that you can help in that decision making process. It's not uncommon for kids and even adults to return back into their athletic activities or any other activities maybe premature of the full recovery is that some of the concern yeah the hard part is knowing when the person is back to normal i think a lot of the different tests that we've been doing in the lab over the years have have helped to clarify that and mm -hmm. and uh, the goal is to get that sort of information into the hands of clinicians and parents and coaches and athletes so that they can be more confident when they're making that decision about how, how an athlete's supposed to return to play. Now, concussions are quite normal, almost, I yeah. hate to say that, in athletics, and we, we're seeing it in professional sports all the time. Yeah. How important is it to just make sure for long-term recovery that you've planned that out well and gone back into the activities in a timely manner? Yeah, there's a number of different points related to that. The first is this idea of uh, what's called second impact syndrome. So that's a situation in which a person returns to play much too soon, like sometimes within the same game. Mm. Um, so that gets her to this idea of being able to clearly and objectively assess whether a concussion has occurred in the first place and then obviously pull that player out of the game. So if you don't have a really good means of assessing whether someone's had a concussion to begin with, then they might be likely to continue playing mm. and, and subsequently if they get a second impact, they can actually have fairly catastrophic uh, consequences. Wow. So that's a short term consequence of trying to be as objective as possible. In the long term, uh, again, you want to make sure within over the course of a single injury that the person doesn't get returned too soon, so they're not in a vulnerable state when mm -hmm. they go back to the sport. And then over the course of an athletic career, if it's a contact sport, kind of knowing when to say when and, and, mm -hmm. and advising, again, parents, athlete, coaches around maybe it's time to no longer play this sport because you're getting to a state where there likely will be long-term consequences. Now your research recently has sort of switched a little bit into more specific looking at continuous hits, things that maybe they're not concussions, right. but that they could have long-term damage and, and effects. Talk a bit about that. Yeah, so there's been some recent research that has shown that uh, for athletes that play contact sports, even if you don't get diagnosed with a concussion, you're still obviously getting hit every mm -hmm. once in a while or delivering a hit. And there's some recent evidence to sh suggest that some of the effects across a season in terms of changes in a person's ability to process information with their brain or even some uh, structural changes to the brain are similar, going in the same direction as what you see when a person actually does get diagnosed with a concussion. Wow. And so that kind of makes you think that, well, you know, those subconcussive blows that are chronically delivered over the course of 20 or 30 or 40 games in a season might be sufficient to induce some of the same changes that you see with a, with a real concussion. So in your research, when you get all your information together, what do you think that will have in the way of an effect in how people play sports and perhaps the seriousness behind the, that contact? It starts to move away from the science. I mean, I guess it's science informing policy around right. how we participate in sports. And so it gets to this idea of how we should uh, change the rules within a sport or change the way we train the athletes within a sport such that it becomes safer. I mean, I don't think we'll ever get rid of contact sports, and that's certainly not the goal of this right. research. I love watching football and hockey as much as everyone else. It's more to make as informed a decisions mm -hmm. as possible about how safe it is for an individual to play, um, how we can potentially change some of the rules or the equipment or some of the training so that athletes are safe, certainly you know, uh, when they're younger, and then making sure that the environment is such that people can be as successful and as healthy as possible throughout a career if they choose to go down that road. Have you been able to see a change in some of the policies because of your research at this stage of the game? Has it had an impact in how people are 
thinking through the process? I mean, I, I don't know if it's necessarily because of my research. I think, you know, to the extent that my research contributes overall mm -hmm. to the information related to concussion, it's probably had some impact on some of the rules that um, we now see, for example, in hockey um, this year, they've instigated this rule where with icing, they'll call it before the players actually get to the puck. Mm -hmm. such that they don't have sometimes those injuries that are created when the players come together in an attempt to get the puck at the, at the end of the ice when they're going very, very fast. So those sorts of rule changes, I think, uh, are partially there to mitigate the risk around uh, getting a concussion. Well, thank you for coming and filling us in on some of the research you're doing, and I think it's very, very important research, and, and uh, especially when there's kids involved in making sure that we have healthy lives and, and uh, can stay active at the same time. Thanks, appreciate it. And that wraps up this episode of UBC's Next Big Thing. Until next time, I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson. Have a great week.